Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from danstube.tv and today I've got my full review of the DJI RC Pro which is DJI's latest smart controller. Now in this video I really want to talk about what the differences are between just the default controller that you'd be getting with your Mavic 3, your Air 2S or your Mini 2 as opposed to the DJI RC Pro. Now, what are the differences here? Why would you want the RC Pro? Are the experiences completely different? Are there a lot of similarities? That's kind of what I want to cover in this video, as well as just giving you my honest thoughts of the DJI RC Pro. This controller here has been kind of the staple of DJI drones for the last couple of years now. Like I said before, the Mavic 3 uh, released the same drone. It's got up to 15 kilometers of range. That's the same as the RC Pro, which is using OcuSync 3 Plus. So the Mavic 3 has got the same controller as this one. The Mini 2 has got the same controller as well as the Air 2S. So we've had a very similar design here. And when the Mavic 3 came out, a lot of people were expecting something different uh, than just this controller here. But instead we got the RC Pro, which is available in the, the Cine edition of the Mavic 3, as well as it's now being sold as a standalone uh, device. Now this only actually connects up with the Air 2S and the Mavic 3 at the moment. And it's very similar to the smart controller that we saw not too long ago, a few years ago uh, from DJI, but they've improved a few things here, including the actual thumbsticks here. They are more designed on like an FPV controller now. So they're a lot more like agile and they bounce back a lot quicker. Like you can see, they just bounce straight back. They're, um, they've got that really good center point that they always bounce back to. Um, and they feel nice when you're actually flying the drone. The other thing is the fact that it's a beautiful display here. It's actually only a 1080p display. The resolution is 1920 by 1080. For some reason I was expecting 2.7K or 4K but a 1080p display, 5.5 inch uh, screen is really all you need and it is phenomenal, it looks gorgeous. The whole idea of the RC Pro is that it's a standalone device that you would take out with you. So previously with most other drone operators out there, um, you would be taking out this controller as well as your phone and then your phone would be connected to the top there. So the display and the responsiveness and everything else, the whole experience will depend on your phone. And if you don't have it on airplane mode, you may be getting calls through, you may be getting you know, uh, messages or different things that are actually slowing down the performance of the application. I do recommend putting your phone on airplane mode if you're gonna fly with this method. But the idea of the RC Pro is that you don't really have to worry about that. You know, you've got a standalone device that has a gorgeous display. Uh, the performance of this device is phenomenal, which is something a few people were complaining about with the previous version. They said the performance wasn't great on it. This is running some crazy internals that actually makes it really snappy. It's a very fast system, uh, had no issues with performance, no latency. The feed was perfect. Like when I was actually flying the drone, I had no dropouts, nothing like that. It works really nicely. Um, and the actual display itself being a thousand nit display, it's a lot better than most phones on the market. Um, and it's gonna be probably better than the phone that you're using. Um, with your device. So that's like the first thing that's gonna stand out here. It's a gorgeous bright display and you can click on that auto button there so it will adjust based on the conditions you're in. So right now, relatively dark, even though I've got two lights on the controller, but it's relatively dark, no direct sunlight, and it's kind of pulled the brightness right down. But I can, you know, turn that right up by default and it's a bright display. Like you can see this in direct sunlight and that's why this stands out because you'll find that if you're flying you know, with this controller and you've got your phone on top, I find I get a lot of glare. I also find that because I've got a screen protector on my phone, depending on the angle and depending on how the sun's hitting it, it's just sometimes really hard to see. So I find myself just going into shade, which you should probably do anyway most of the time. But in direct sunlight, the RC Pro just excels. It has no issues. It fully maxes out the brightness and then you can see it no matter how much direct sunlight is hammering down on this display. And um, yeah, it's a really gorgeous display. The other thing about having a dedicated device uh, like this is you can have it prepared before you leave. Um, with a phone, you may be using it through the day, you may be 
calling people, texting people, messaging, doing all these different things. And then it comes to flying the drone and your battery may be depleted, it may be coming down. So you're gonna to have to charge that through the actual remote control, which is then gonna drain the battery life of just the default controller, which has never been an issue to me. And that's not a problem that I've ever encountered. But if you're flying a lot longer than I would be, if you're, you know, you've got multiple batteries, let's say you've got six batteries and you're flying for hours, um, then having a dedicated device that has up to three hours of operating time, it has, you know, that amazing display. It's also got 32 gig of internal storage so that you can back up some photos on the fly or back up a few videos. Um, that's just a really nice feature. But I think the thing that I love so much about this device is the fact that it's running um, a very simplified, a very kind of clean version of Android that's clearly been designed specifically for this controller here. So what that actually means is if I go into the file system, I can actually see exactly what's happening. I can see what images, what videos, audio, downloads. I can see everything that's getting downloaded onto this Android device in a really clean file system. And then from there, because I've got a USB-C in the bottom of the actual controller, I can plug that in directly to my hard drive or to another device that I may have, and I can back up footage on the fly. With this being an Android device as well, it means that I can download third-party apps directly to this launcher here. So I've got UAV Forecast, which is a really great app to have on your device. I've got Open Sky, and I've also got Drone Buddy. It's not that hard to actually download these third-party apps to the device but I do find that they're not 100% reliable all the time. Like if I try to launch Drone Buddy, it actually doesn't launch the application. And that's the same experience with Open Sky. It actually just doesn't launch the applications. Now with UAV Forecast, that one actually does launch for me, um, but that's something that you've got to keep in mind. Like even if you were to download uh, Lychee, which is a third party uh, flight controller that allows you to open up waypoints and tracking modes for your drones, um, that's actually not compatible with the RC Pro right now. So even though it sounds great on paper, uh, the actual functionality right now isn't 100% backed up by all of these developers. The other thing to keep in mind is that they've advertised this as having live streaming options and it's a unique thing to the RC Pro. Unfortunately, live streaming isn't available right now at the time of me doing this. Um, there are workarounds and you probably can make it work. But again, the fact that the apps aren't truly supported just yet on this device means that it's quite a basic version. Um, and considering it's a relatively expensive device, um, you're basically just spending a lot of money on a beautiful display and a gorgeous controller. And that's what it is, you know, like it does an amazing job. It feels great in your hand. It's a sturdy design. Everything just feels quality, but you would expect that considering how expensive this is. So I think you've just really got to keep that in mind. If you're taking drones really seriously and if you want to back up everything on the fly, then this is great because you can plug something in and back everything up. If you want a dedicated device that allows you to, you know, have everything in the one place and not have to worry about having your phone and then trying to connect it to your computer or your laptop later, you can just back everything up onto this device. And that's actually where I think it really excels because if you're going to go somewhere where you're not going to have your laptop or your computer with you, let's say you're just going with your drone and your controller, this allows you to back up after every flight and you don't have to worry about corrupt files or you know, filling up your SD card on your drone. You can literally back up as you're going. The RC Pro can support videos up to 4K at 120 frames per second, which is perfect for most of the latest drones. Uh, considering a few drones are actually capturing 5K video now, I don't know exactly what that means. It can still play the files, but it probably just struggles to play them. Um, I did find that when I would plug in my hard drive, I did have like a tiny delay as it was trying to like buffer the video, but then once it started playing back the video, it seemed to just work perfectly. You also do get a mini HDMI port, you get an all purpose USB-C port, and you get a micro SD card slot as well. Um, and then on top of that, you actually have some really solid speakers on the back of the controller. So if you wanna use this as a media device, let's say that you're going on a road trip and you don't wanna give your phone to your kid, you can just give them this, set up some movies on it, and uh, it's a really cool media device with a great display. And even if you're sitting in the car with that direct sunlight, that thousand nit display is gonna do wonders. You're gonna have no issues with it. So being that uh, it is an actual like media device, like it's designed to be perfect for playback as well, just allows you to review your drone footage as well while you're out in the field, which is great because you know you might not have the best phone in the world, 
but this is like a very nice display that's gonna show you all the details. Um, and as I'm zooming into photos, it's very crispy. Like it's clear, the, the clarity of the image is, is fantastic. It's yeah, really nice. Um, and considering it's only a 1080p display, I think because it's still relatively small of a display, like it's only a 5.5 inch display, that would obviously be different if you were trying to blow it up to a monitor, for example. But having a 1080p display is really nice. And previous DJI drones were actually only maxing out at 720, uh, 720p for the live view. They only recently kind of went up to 1080p. So now when you're actually flying your drone, you're getting the video feed to your controller. It's now can actually display up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. So it works perfectly with a device like this that can actually support 1080p 60 um, on a really gorgeous 5.5 inch display. The other thing to mention about the RC Pro is that you get a few additional like programmable buttons that you can set up through the DJI Fly app. So you've got this 5D toggle wheel here. It's kind of just like a joystick. You can go up, left, right, down, and then you can also press it in. And that's the five directions. And then you have a C1 and a C2 button on the back here. So those are all programmable through the DJI Fly app. That's one of the like standout features that you wouldn't get on a controller like this that actually only has um, the FN button that can be programmed for two functions. But you have two standalone FN buttons, the C1 and C2 buttons, and you have that 5D button, which gives you five different functions. Uh, so that's one of the standout features um, as opposed to the default controller. And then it's also really fun to actually set this up and create like your own experience out of it. You can have Firefox on here. Um, I could download Google Chrome. I could download Netflix if I really wanted. I could download games. You could also download uh, relevant drone apps, but like I mentioned, the support isn't there just yet. But the fact that you can customize this experience just for your drone, um, I love that. You know, instead of having the clutter of your phone that may be filled with other things and other distractions, this is purely dedicated to your drone. Um, and that's where um, it's a really nice investment if you can afford it. Otherwise, it's really hard to recommend this to people because your phone and the default controller is gonna do exactly what you need it to do unless you really need those additional options. Uh, if you're really into backing up your footage, then this could probably be the, the best, uh, I would say, option out there for you, just so then you don't have to fiddle around with getting the micro SD out of the drone and doing all different things. It literally is an Android device, so you can just plug in uh, whatever at the bottom, like a hard drive, SSD, wait, whatever you may, you know, even some form of like flash drive you could plug in and then you could just back it up uh, straight from the device. And that's where it becomes a, a really cool all purpose multimedia device. I also love having those antennas again. That's really nice because you don't get them with this um, and the antennas feel really good. But the fact that I can, you know, change the direction depending on where my drone is, whether it's above me, I want to flick it down like that or if it's in front of me, you know, I want to flick it up like that. I love being able to have that control and that will probably improve the range as opposed to just having them built into the body of the default controller. And in terms of the runtime, they say you get about three hours. That would probably be pretty accurate. I mean, I've been playing with all the different settings and then I may charge it and go for a flight. So I haven't like fully gone for three hours to test it out, but I reckon three hours is pretty realistic. Um, in terms of the actual build quality of the controller. Again, that's where it, it stands out over this default controller. You can really feel um, how sturdy and, and resilient this controller design is. But outside of that, it is a very expensive purchase. And again, it just depends on your needs. If you are interested in backing up on the fly, if you're interested in having like a full Android device that you can customize, if those live streaming features appeal to you, then maybe look into it, but it is quite an investment and something that uh, you really need to, I guess, justify uh, before getting this because it's really hard to co like compare it and give you a full uh, recommendation for this over the default controller that you get because the full package that you're getting with that default controller in your drone does everything that you need. All the functionality is coming through the DJI Fly app um, and this is just kind of an amazing bonus and such a novelty to use and it really does add a whole fun element uh, to flying the drone. It's something brand new, but it's just hard to recommend to people if you can't justify that price point. But anyway, guys, that is the end of my review of the DJI RC Pro. Uh, like I said, hard one to recommend, but still an amazing device uh, that if you get a chance to check out, then definitely have a play with it because it's a lot of fun. And I think as the months go on and as the support starts to come in, 
as we start seeing some new features like that live streaming feature, um, then it could start becoming a little bit easier to recommend to people. But right now I would probably hold off unless it's something that you 100% think you need. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support. I'll chat to you in the next one and peace out.